Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Taking a look at the college football playoff matchups, and we are starting with our Michigan Wolverines as they play TCU. Obviously, Michigan is our team. We spend a lot of time talking about Michigan. And as Michigan fans, I think this is the best possible matchup for Michigan in the semifinals. Did not want to see Ohio State, although I'm confident we'd be able to handle them again. Certainly didn't want to see Georgia. You look at what TCU struggles against, it's what Michigan does well. I think this is a great matchup for Michigan. Excited to get into it before we do, though. Just want to say thank you guys for all the support, especially the Michigan fans. We've been covering a lot of the transfer portal news, a lot of the recruiting news, and the Michigan fans have been absolutely awesome with all the support you guys have shown. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We really do appreciate all the support you guys have shown. Dill, I'm going to kick this one off to you. What are your early takes on this game? We covered it about four weeks ago. We've had some news since. Early takes here. Yeah, I mean, I think to me this will come down a lot to whether Michigan can consistently handle deep explosive plays out of TCU. And that's in the few moments Michigan's defense has given up much, which frankly they haven't all year for the most part. But it has been with big athletic receivers who can make contested catches. It was the plays that hurt us against Ohio State were very much Marvin Harrison driven in making big plays down the field. Even in tight coverage, he's just getting up, making plays on wide uh, corners. And then obviously the other times where Keon Coleman made a few plays against at uh, uh, Michigan State and then even a few plays at, at Rutgers. So that to me is going to be the key. If Michigan can pretty much limit those like they have all year, I think they should be okay. If, if Quentin Johnson, though, is just making plays downfield, that'll I think that could get to be a bit of an issue. Yeah, that's that's probably the biggest story on defense. <clears throat> the second story, I mean, Quentin Johnson is is he's my number one wide receiver in the country. He's my number one wide receiver on my 2023 NFL draft board. He's a freak, especially with the ball in the air, working vertically down the field. And Michigan's going to have to deal with that. And I think you're going to see a lot of too deep, a lot of safeties over top of them. Maybe giving them some of the shorter stuff, but yeah, limiting those explosive plays is going to be big because that is part of why TCU has moved the ball down the field. Second, I think getting after the passer. This TCU offense line has struggled a little bit against really, really good defensive lines. You go look at Texas, Kansas State. Max Duggan was getting beat up, and this is a good TCU offensive line, but against elite talent, they've struggled a little bit. Now, two things. Michigan getting after Max Duggan, one thing. Keeping him in the pocket is also an imperative. I mean, Max Duggan's a very, very good athlete. He's very, very tough. There's a reason he was the second in, in Heisman voting. Like, very good football player, especially at the collegiate level. Michigan's going to need to be very disciplined in their pass rush lanes and also with those linebackers spying him. Mike Morris coming back, finally being healthy, I think is going to be massive. That's what I'm looking for because that without Mike Morris, there's not really a guy who's consistently winning on the edge, play in and play out. And again, they've done really pretty good up up the middle with uh, the defensive tackles, Mozzie Smith, Jenkins. Give me more Mason Graham, by the Mason way. Graham, right. Hammer. But like, I'm kind of with you. Uh, and Iabioki started to emerge. He's he's made some plays, but I, I think in terms of consistency, Mike Morris is pretty far and away the guy who's putting up the numbers and in, in doing and in being disruptive on a play in and play out basis. So. Getting him back is huge because obviously he wasn't really healthy at all against Ohio State, and uh, and that showed. Frankly, there was a lot of time Stroud had where he he could pick a or he should have been able to pick us apart, if you will. But the the defense, the secondary, just played really well. I don't think that's a good place to be in that ever. Like when good defenses rush the passer, that's just like flat out. And I think another key to this Michigan defense is is winning against the run. I mean, this is a TCU team that's run the ball extremely well, whether it's Max Duggan, whether it's Kendra Miller or Amari DiMicardo. Kendra Miller's averaging over six yards per carry. He's been one of the best running backs in the whole entire country. I love his game. And TCU, when they're humming on offense, they're staying on schedule. They're not forcing Max Duggan to drop back in third and 10 and, and push the ball down the field. That's not necessarily his strong suit. He can do it, but it's not necessarily a strong suit. When you've seen that TCU offensive line struggle, it's when Mich- uh, defense alignment – are able to pin their ears back in, in kind of obvious pass rush opportunities. If Michigan can stop the run on first and second down, force some third and seven pluses, let guys like Mike Morris, Yabi Oki, Mozzie Smith up the middle loose, rushing the passer, I think that's a really good recipe. Now, yeah. I want to 
I want to flip over to the Michigan offensive side of the ball because this is where I really think the matchup best fits Michigan. TCU, running that 3-3-5 defense, I think it works in the Big 12 when people want to use a little bit more space. Like teams like Kansas or Kansas State, they want to kind of get those running backs out to the perimeter. Having more speed on the field helps. Michigan doesn't really do that. That's not how they run that run game. They run power runs, gap scheme, and they get downhill quickly. Obviously, no Blake Corum hurts, but if Donovan Edwards has that cast off, I mean, this is a Michigan team that I think is going to be able to run the ball very effectively. TCU is averaging, allowing over four yards per carry to opposing running backs. Blake Corum, or Donovan Edwards, excuse me, is averaging over seven yards per carry. I mean, you let this offensive line for Michigan that is so physically imposing get downhill. I think Michigan is going to be able to stay on schedule, run the football, and keep that explosive TCU offense off the field. Well, that's the big thing for me is Donovan Edwards in terms of like from the early portion of this year and last year, he's made some monster strides to me in terms of his just play in and play out running game. Like we've always seen the big uh, home run hitting yeah. ability from him, but in terms of <clears throat> being able to run in between the tackles, make guys miss, have better contact balance and, and finish runs tougher. I think he's made massive strides down the stretch, especially as he's had to take a fair amount of the load from Blake Corum. But again, you saw what he was able to do against Ohio State once they started to get moving. He was I mean, he was doing what Blake Corum, what he did so well for Michigan, where he was just five yards kind of a play, and, and that's just kind of what it was. And, and, and against Purdue, he really did a good job, I think, in, in that sort of game. So I'm hoping to see him – again, just continue to evolve into being able to be that every down back who just, he hits the big plays. He does everything right. He, he doesn't fumble. He, he, he finishes runs hard. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest thing to. you, you want to see out of Donovan Edwards. And it's something we've seen over the last couple of weeks when Blake Corm has been down is what was so valuable about, about Blake Corm is, I mean, that dude was always finishing runs hard. I mean, four yards, five yards, consistently keeping Michigan on schedule. That is That was what Blake Corn brought to the table. Donovan Edwards brings a little bit more of that home run hitting ability with that straight line speed, but you said it best. Like as he's a, a learning the college football game, you saw it mostly as a true freshman when he really just kind of struggled to, to hit the whole hard and pick up the hard five. That's not the case now. And if Michigan can run the ball and keep this TCU offense off the field, I, I you got to love Michigan in this game. That's why I love Michigan so much. In this that's game. when Michigan struggles is when they don't run the ball very well. Like against Illinois, they really couldn't run it. And that obviously Donovan and Blake were out. So that certainly hurts. But when they just need to pass every play, that hasn't really been the recipe yet. And I will say J.J. McCarthy has looked by far his best two games for the last two games against Ohio State and uh, Purdue. And I – I'd like to think we if if it came to it he could he could do it and and that's something he's kind of growing into, uh, especially coming off an injury where he pretty much missed most of the off season. <clears throat> but I, I don't think I want to see that right now. I, I'd like to see them be able to play their game, run the ball, and throw out a play action because that's ultimately when when they're doing that nobody's been able to stop them at all. Yeah, yeah, and I I wouldn't be surprised <clears throat> kind of like we saw against Ohio State. Like in games where you need it, let JJ McCarthy use his legs because it, it is a it's something that Michigan's kind of tried to avoid. Like we all know he can he can move. He's very very fast. He runs the ball. He's got he's very comfortable in open space, reading blocks, setting up defenders. We just haven't really asked him to do much because with Cade McNamara being hurt as quarterback too, and now not there in the transfer portal at Iowa, uh, you wanted to keep him healthy. In college football playoffs, you're letting everything out of the tool shed. And so using J.J. McCarthy and his legs on the perimeter, I think will also be something we'll see Michigan try to do. But it does come down to just running the ball effectively. If TCU brings those safeties up like Ohio State tried to do, then you get guys like Cornelius Johnson, Ronnie Bell, Colson Loveland loose down the field up the seams. And that's kind of that's kind of how I think Michigan can take care of TCU here. Yeah, that's that's just ultimately the recipe. Like I, I think Michigan's almost impossible to beat for anyone, maybe besides Georgia, if they can run the ball really effectively in the and then let JJ work off of it. 
Um, yeah, and the only problem with Georgia is that running the ball effectively is going to be really hard. Like Georgia might not have to load the box to stop this Michigan run game. I can't. I I really hope Georgia takes care of business against Ohio State and we get a chance to do it again because this offensive line is better. Like I, you have a healthy Trevor Keegan again. He's been banged up pretty much all year. You have a you, you get Ryan Hayes probably has also been banged up all year. You get all those five guys healthy. This is the best Michigan. It was it was better than the Joe Ward winners last year like Olu at center I think is the best center in the country uh, I'm excited to see what we can do physically up front against a Georgia team not to look ahead but against a Georgia team because I do think this offensive line is a little bit different this year yeah and I also don't think Georgia is quite the hammer they were but I mean that's not saying they're bad that's just saying like that 2022 team was just different unbelievable or 20 I should say yeah and I I think the spread is probably right. Like Michigan has a a touchdown and a half point favorite. I think Michigan is the better team. They've played better. And this is a TCU team that they figured out how to win games, but they haven't looked like a top four team in the country. (laughs) They've been, but that's something to say what Sonny Dykes has done. And they figure out to win football games. And that's something that you can't take for granted. But guess what's another team that's figured out how to win football games consistently? Michigan Wolverines. And they match up, I think, a little bit better. I don't think TCU's seen as physical of a offensive and defensive front as Michigan. And I think they're really going to struggle. I think it comes down to running the football and then limiting those TCU explosive plays, because again, they have speed all over the field, but you have to be able to kind of limit that force Max Duggan to consistently march the ball down the field on you. Cause that's something that TCU struggled a little bit to do, especially towards the end of the later half of the season, consistently yeah. making throws, not picking up penalties. And, not, and if you, don't let Quentin Johnson get loose over the top or Darius Davis with that speed. I really like Michigan here in this spot. I think it's a great matchup, and you're finally getting Michigan healthy. I mean, this is a Michigan team that across pretty much everywhere, they've struggled with injuries. The offensive line, the running backs, the wide receivers. Uh, getting a full, healthy Michigan team is going to be big. Yeah, having a guy like Makari Page, because, again, you're going to need speed in the back end, and that's certainly what he brings. He is, for my – eyes the fastest safety Michigan's got. So when he's on the field, it looks a little different to me at least. So again, what you just mentioned, the health and, and obviously TCU, everyone gets a little more healthy when they have a little extra time. And yeah, Quentin Johnson's also been battling injuries that with that ankle. So but I, I do th- I, I don't think we'll see a lot of RJ Mo. That's think we'll see a lot, I think we should see a lot of Makari Page. That'll do it for the boys again. Uh it seems like a perfect matchup for Michigan. Now it's just taking care of business and getting that rematch against the Georgia Bulldogs in the finals. I cannot wait for it again. Appreciate you guys checking us out. And if you do enjoy the content, especially if you're the Michigan fans, subscribe to the channel. We're talking Michigan football a lot. We appreciate all the support you guys have shown, and we'll talk to you all later.